الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد قال امام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى قال التاسع من اعتقد ان بعد الناس يسعه خروج عن شريعه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كما وسع الخضر خضر خروج عن شريعة موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام فهو كافر إمام محمد بن الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى said the ninth nullifier of Iman is anyone who believes that some people are exempt from following the legislation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just as Khidr was exempt from following the legislation of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, then he has believed. So believing that you are exempt or that a certain amount of group of people are exempt from following uh, what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then this also takes a person out of the fold of Islam. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent to all of mankind, the mankind and the jinn which distinguished him from the previous nations and the previous messengers and prophets alayhim after the salatu was salam. And this is from the uniqueness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this makes it necessary for all of mankind to follow his sunnah alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have not sent you except as a giver of glad tidings and one who warns to all of mankind, but most men know not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Say, O mankind, verily I am sent to you all as the messenger of Allah. The Prophet said, Prophets used to be sent to a particular people, but I was sent to all of mankind. The Prophet said in another hadith, By the one whose hand Muhammad's soul is in, there is not a Jew or Christian who hears about me and then dies without believing in what I was sent with, except that he will be from the people of the hellfire. So it is an obligation to follow the sunnah of the Prophet This is not something we have a choice in the matter. And especially as Muslims, there is no uh, level of iman or no level of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person can reach which nullifies or negates following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there are many deviant, deviant groups and sects who hold this type of kufr in their belief, in their itaqad. There are groups like the um, Baha'i and all these other ones who are not even Muslim. They consider themselves Muslim they add Islam to uh, their name or, or something similar to this, but they are so far away from the, uh, the, they've transgressed the bounds of Islam and they have nothing, uh, no compatibility with Muslims in Aqidah. There, there's nothing uh, in which they agree. You know, some of the, these sects and groups don't believe in the Quran. They believe the Quran is, uh, either created or that's been tampered with. They believe in a messenger after the Prophet ﷺ. They negate the messengership of the Prophet ﷺ. All kind of false beliefs which make a person far, far from Islam, far removed from the religion of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, or he saw Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and in his hand was a page of the Torah, the, the book of the, the Jews, and the, the book that Moses, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, was given. So he admonished him. The Prophet sallallahu admonished Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, O son of al-Khattab, I have been sent to you with that which is pure and white, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah. If Musa was alive, he would not be commanded to do anything except follow me. Then Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, we are pleased with the law as our Lord and Islam as our religion and Muhammad as our prophet and messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. 
The scholars disagree over whether, for uh, going back to what the statement of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, where he said, anyone who believes that some people are exempt from following the legislation of Muhammad وسلم, just as Khidr was exempt from following the legislation of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, has disbelieved. So we, now we need to know a little bit about who Khidr was. The scholars disagree over whether Khidr was a prophet or a saint, or you know, a righteous uh, holy man. And according to the evidences, the most correct opinion is that he was a prophet. And Khidr met Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and they both were prophets and received revelation and possessed certain knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them. Therefore, Khidr was not sent to the children of Israel like Musa, but sent to his own people with a different set of commandments. But of course, all of the prophets, all of the messengers were sent with the message of Tawheed, but their Sharia, their laws and various commandments about what was uh, perhaps halal and what was haram to certain nations differed. But what they had in common was that they all, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, they all uh, worshipped Allah alone. They all were sent with Tawheed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْقُودٍ that, that we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things worship besides Allah. That is the essential message essential message of all the messengers alayhim after salatu wasalam from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam or all those who were sent with messages uh, Moses, Abraham, uh, Nuh, Dawood, all of them, uh, Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. Uh, they were all sent with the same message to call to Allah, to call to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. To worship Allah alone. This is what mankind has been enjoined, has been enjoined uh, the commandment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them with. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنِ وَالْإِنْسَ لِلَّيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْنَ And worship Allah and do not associate partners with, with Him. And this is the essential message of, of all the Prophets عَلَيْهِمْ أَفْضَلْ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ Therefore, Khidr was not sent to the children of Israel like Musa, but was sent to his own people with a different set of commandments. Uh, Shaykh uh, uh, Abdulaziz al Rais states, it was necessary for Khidr to follow him. This is because the messengers were sent with a specific, with, uh, it was it was not necessary for Khidr to follow him. This is because the messengers were sent with a specific with specific laws, except our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whose message was was general, meaning sent to all of mankind. But the prophets, alayhim after the salatu wasalam, that were sent before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, were all sent to their particular people. They were sent with, <clears throat> if they were sent with a, a, a book that was revealed, that was revelation, then they were sent with certain laws that were uh, useful and beneficial for those particular people. But they were all worship, uh, ordered to worship Allah alone. And another point Sheikh Abdulaziz Arais mentioned was that the things Khidr did were not in contradiction to the laws of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And he did not know the reasons behind Khidr's actions and when it was made clear to him, he agreed to them. This is the, was the case of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and al-Qadi Iyad both mention that there is a consensus that leaving the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam is disbelief. Some of the doubtful matters, uh, matters raised by some sects pertaining to this issue is very important. This is a mas'ala that we have to look into. What do the people of shubahat, what are the people of uh, doubtfulness, the people of ahl bid'ah wal ahwa, the people of desires, the people of innovation, what issues uh, uh, arise out of this uh, naqid min nawaqid al-islam? What are the things, what are the doubtful things that they come with? Well, Ibn Hazm, Rahimullah Ta'ala said, A group amongst the Sufis 
claims that there is a group of awliya, meaning friends or saints, uh, friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or saints, people who are holy and righteous people. So these Sufis, they claim there's a group of awliya of Allah, the Almighty, who are better than all the messengers and prophets, alayhim after salatu salam. Their claim, this is in the time of Ibn Hazm, that they claimed that their awliya were better than the messengers, alayhim salatu salam. That's kufr already, meaning that these people have reached such a level of ibadah and worship and piety that they're better than the prophets, alayhim after salatu salam, which is batil and falsehood and bid'ah wa zandaka wa kufr and evil. They say whoever reaches the pinnacle of sainthood, then all the sharia is non applicable to him from salat, fasting, alms, and other duties. Therefore, it is permissible to do all the prohibited things like adultery and drink alcohol, etc. And they seek to make enjoying unlawful women permissible for them. And they say, because we see Allah and speak to Him and whatever emanates from our hearts is the truth. So basically, they are the people of desires and bid'ah khalis Kufriya, that they have disbelief that takes them out of the fold of Islam and they are purely people of their desires. Why? Because they say they see Allah and they say that they speak to Allah as if they have a special relationship that the prophets والسلام, didn't have. And that whatever comes from their hearts, meaning whatever their hearts are inclined to, whatever their desires are inclined to, is the truth. So the truth, therefore, is not taken from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, but rather it comes from their emotions and it comes from their whims and it comes from their desires and it comes from what's in their hearts. Whatever their hearts incline them towards becomes a truth. Oh, it's okay now to sit with and, and enjoy several women at once. That is what his heart desires, so now it's permissible. And he's not restricted by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, So you can see the dalal. And don't think that this is a strange belief. That this belief was something just of the time. Ibn Hazm is, is speaking about that. Imam Ibn Hazm Rahimahullah Ta'ala is speaking about this. That this is something that they witnessed and that was known in their time. This is, exists in our times. We have people like Shirk, Nazm and others who have these kind of itaqad. People who say that, and, and, and trust me, look into their beliefs. And if you are uh, affected by that, search in your heart for the truth and, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and look to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And that's where you'll find guidance. But it isn't going to be by blind following an imam, blind following a Sufi sheikh, blind following this saint, or so-and-so uh, who is alleged, uh, supposedly, supposed to be a saint who no longer worships, worships Allah. Know that they're calling you to dalala and kufr if they're calling you to just dance until slobber comes out of your mouth and say Allahu, Allahu, Allahu uh, until you pass out almost and become delirious. That this is not anything from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. nor does it bring you closer to Allah. That's the important thing. No matter how good you feel, no matter how deep of a yoga meditation that you've come into, that and, and, and this, this it, it doesn't bring you closer to Allah because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't do it and we're ordered to follow his sunnah and whatever his sunnah came whatever he came with in his sunnah is the best it's the best there's nothing going beyond that and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said regarding this sect from this group is those who, who, who use the saying of Allah and worship your Lord until you reach certainty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, uh, which means, وَعْبُدُ حَتَّى بَلَغَ yaqeen," Or, you know, worship Allah, which means, worship Allah until you reach certainty. Yaqeen. Cer- yaqeen. yaqeen in Arabic, it means certainty here. And certainty, what is the meaning? Shaykh al-Islam says, and they say it means worship your Lord until you reach knowledge and understanding. And if one achieves that, worship is no longer necessary. This is what they believe. Some of them say, strive until you achieve a certain state. And if you reach a certain state of mysticism, then you are not responsible for worship. Some of these people believe that if you reach that certain level 
of understanding and state, then it is permissible to leave the obligatory acts and commit the prohibited. And that was a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. Those sects that exploit the fact that Khidr did not follow Musa alayhi salatu wasalam believe that it is also permissible for their saints to leave the Islamic bounds of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu wasalam. And this is the nullification of one's faith. So it shows you how Ahl al-Dalal, how when you follow your desires, when you follow your whims, when you follow just your heart without using the text to make your judgments and to, 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 uh, to understand and have the correct aqidah, then that will lead you astray. Because there's no way you're going to, by just thinking and meditate, know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Know His uh, asma'i wa sifat and know their meanings by just contemplating. And, but no, instead, we gain these nasus, we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by the Qur'an and by the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu We need the nasus. The nasus is how we, the nasus comes before our, our, our intellect. Because everyone's intellect differs. Fred's intellect differs from Joe. Joe's intellect differs from Muhammad. Muhammad's intellect differs from Sally. Sally's intellect differs from Fatima. This is just a, a well-known fact that our intellect differs and our desires are not all the same so we don't use those things to make our judgments and to form the basis of our aqeedah and our belief but rather we use the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to understanding understand and know what Islam is and how to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of the uh, Points, important points regarding this and regarding those people who go astray in this. Number one, it implies when the person holds this belief that they just follow their desires or that they can go beyond the bounds, it implies one is better than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum uh, who observed the sharia limits and that the saints have achieved a level of worship and understanding they did not gain, they did not know about. That's what that implies. Number two, this creed involves making the unlawful lawful, which is open and clear disbelief. This is istihlal. This is making the lawful unlawful or the unlawful lawful. Number three, the yaqeen implied in the verse refers to death, and that is agreed upon by the early scholars. So go back to the tafsir of that ayat. Number four, from the belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that the one who denies a ruling which is known from the religion by necessity, that they become a disbeliever, an apostate, and they lose the sacredness of Islam. And if someone rejects the ob obligation of clear compulsory duties, which are well known or rejects the prohibition of that which is clearly forbidden and well known uh, as long as he is not ignorant or new to the religion of Islam or living in an isolated village surrounded by ignorance uh, then they're not excused. Imam Anawawi says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he goes on to explain the criterion of those things known in the religion by necessity. The, the uh, ulama, they say, Maruf bi uh, ma'lum min adin bi durura. Things that are known uh, by necessity in the religion. So Imam Manoe said, Today Islam has become widespread. This was in the time of Imam Noe, Rahimullah Ta'ala. And the Muslims have common knowledge of the obligation of zakat. Even both the layman and scholar know this. So no one is excused due to his misinterpretation by denying it. Likewise, whoever denies anything that the Muslim community has consensus upon related to the affairs of the religion and the knowledge of that obligation is widespread, like praying five times a day, fasting Ramadan, bathing after sexual relations, the prohibition of fornication, alcohol, and marrying those prohibited to marry, and legislation similar to this. That means those people are not excused because those things are ma'lum min adin bi Those things are known to the religion by necessity, meaning everyone knows them. Even non-Muslims know that Muslims should not drink alcohol. Even non-Muslims know that Muslims do not eat pork. Even non-Muslims know that Muslims pray five times a day, generally. that Even they know that. So what about a Muslim? Muslims are not excused by those things. 
and it would be in rare, rare situations, especially for those things the ulama classify as ma'lum in a deen bi that it's so widespread around the world that everyone knows who, who uh, has any relationship with Islam. Number five, Allah subhanahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and say not that which your tongues have put forth falsely. This is lawful and this is forbidden, so as to invent lies against Allah. Verily, those who invent lies against Allah will never prosper. That's in Surah Al-Nahl, and that is verse 116. Ibn al-Kathir explains about this verse, anyone who invents an innovation in Islam that has no origin in the Sharia fits into this verse or makes lawful something prohibited by law or prohibits something permissible based upon his opinion or his desire. Uh, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala says uh, regarding, this, regarding the verse, success is not totally negated in entirety except for the person who has no good and he is a disbeliever. Number six, whoever claims that he or the leader of his sect is more knowledgeable than the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about, has more knowledge about reality and better in making it clear than him, then, then he is a zindiq an apostate, a hypocrite, even if he illustrates apparent belief in them. And this is according to the consensus of the believers. So it shows us that anyone who claims or anyone says that they are better or no more than the messengers alayhim after salatu wa salam, then there is an diq, they're an apostate from the religion of Islam. This illustrates the fact that these actions and beliefs of extreme individuals and sects who do not observe the boundaries of the sharia are in fact dis belief and apostasy due to their nullification of Islamic law. They're committing shirk in both worship and lordship and their general belief that they are above the sharia and no longer responsible for its tenets. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from this falsehood and protect us and protect the ummah from these people of falsehood who and protect the new shahadas from embracing this wicked ideology and wicked belief which cause causes people to go astray and become zanadik wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad